How are you boys and girls? Uh, I noticed a little while back when I was uh, playing with Oscar here that uh, I had a little bit of a problem um, with controlling the middle pickup volume independently. And uh, I put it aside thinking I'll get back to it sometime. So this was one of the first uh, reworks that I that I did a big major one like this um, <clears throat> and on my drawing I have one two three pots on the guitar there's one two three four pots what went wrong I don't know so today what I'm going to do is take the neck off pull that back take off the pick guard, take a look underneath and find out like what did I really do that isn't on my drawing and how have I wired this because this should have worked as an independent volume circuit so I don't know what this does it says tone on it maybe this tone yeah, it's a tone. I didn't add the tone circuit in here. Okay, let's just uh, let's just plug this in to my little test amp here. We can turn that on. It'll be out of your view. not working as a tone. In the middle position, or in the bridge position, or in the neck position. So, it's a mystery. I'm just going to unplug that for now until we get back inside um, I'm really impressed with um, this guitar uh, as it turned out this Oscar Schmidt um, it's got a really nice weight to it the neck uh, is glossy but wow it feels so good and it's a beautiful color it doesn't show very well on on the camera but it is a beautiful amber color uh, it's very nicely done. Uh, the tuners on here are still original. I haven't done anything to this since I demoed it. Uh, the action on this thing is incredibly low and beautiful to play. I mean, it's so easy all up and down the neck. It's just incredible. To the point where I noticed today that, look at my saddles. They're pointing downwards. I have set screws to replace those high ones now, which I think I'll do. But in looking at the saddles, I'm thinking they're, they, they're down as low as they can possibly go to get this action. And I might consider putting a little bit of a shim in the heel of the neck area to make it cat back just slightly so maybe those saddles can come up a tiny little bit. And then I could readjust the uh, the pickups so that they're not canting down like that. I don't know. I'll see when I get the neck off and where I'm going. But first, I want to see why, like, what the hell did I do here? So the first thing I'm going to end up doing is uh, finding my winder because I'm at the other I'm at the other bench where I normally don't do this kind of stuff. It's it's a little bit clearer a little bit more open and I have my soldering iron station at this bench so I can uh, I can work over here all right so I, I saved these out of the boxes uh, normally they come as who uh, the breakable foam but this one's a spongy foam and it's kind of rigid and it helps you know when you want to be able to support your neck so I'm gonna loosen all the the strings so that when I re, uh, release the screw
screws. Let's just start with these all a little bit straight up like that. And then, yeah, and then leave it like that. Um, come on, go that way. So that when I release the screws on the back of the neck, you know, I, I won't have a lot of tension here to, uh, to pull on me, and I'll be able to get it back in more easily as well. Leave that up. Leaving them up like this gives me more space to uh, use the winder and also your fingers when you're trying to uh, do it by hand. I'll release the string trees, which will give me a little bit more slack. Okay, I'm going to put a capo here, and then start releasing the screws. Mm -hmm. Capo on the neck. That will stop that all from flopping around too much. Alright, we'll just put that up there for now. All right, let's turn it over. We need some working space. Screwdriver. All right, so release the tension by hand. Being careful not to slip, scratch anything. And then I can go to the mechanized one again holding the bottom so that nothing happens to damage anything. Boom. All right. Container up there. This back plate didn't have the uh, plastic cover under it. sharp edges off to avoid scratching. It's still a little bit around there. All right. The neck is released. Let's, oh, let's be careful when we turn it over. Pop it out. Okay, so there is no shim in the neck now. So what we're going to do is pull this forward and put the neck down that way to just keep it out of the way and uh, just to protect the fancy paint job of Oscar we're going to do that now these uh, don't really need a lot of releasing so I'm just going to do them quickly with this tool Oh, that one isn't even all the way down. Look at that. I hate it when I find out that I'm not infallible on my work. a lot of real estate in there to cram all that into. holding it. Where is it? Is there another one? What was 
holding it? Anything holding it? No, nope, it was just stuck. All right. All right. All right, let's just move this over a little bit. I guess I should have planned my space a little bit better here. All right. Another one of these. Up underneath there. The circuit out. Okay, so I'm taking a break uh, between the musical stuff. My arthritis is bothering me a little bit this morning. I haven't taken my ibuprofens yet, and I have decided to take a look into this Oscar problem. That is supposed to be a tone, I think. I don't know why it's not working. Yeah, there's a capacitor on it. All right. Um, it's a 500 that I made into a 250. Did I show that? Yeah, you see in my early uh, stuff here, before I got really meticulous about it, I... Uh, didn't show what I did on my circuit so uh, yeah I'm gonna have to go back and trace all this stuff now it's my morning coffee all right let's take a look and see what we've got um, do I need to disconnect this I don't think I want to let's uh, not put any tension on those wires they're tie wrapped. Okay, so there's the output to the jack. And it's supposed to be on that terminal, which it is, and the ground is going to, and the ground is going to, and the ground is going to uh, here. All right, so. This extra pot, which is marked tone, going to ground, and it's going to, and it's going to here. That's not where it should go. That's a problem right there. If that was to be a master tone, it should have connected here uh, to where the uh, the jack is. Oh, you can barely see that in the circuit. Sorry. Uh, the master tone is uh, connected at the moment to here, which is the uh, bridge pickup input. And it should have gone here if it was going to act as a master tone for all the outputs coming to the jack. All right, uh, give me a little bit to uh, look over the circuit, and uh, I'll be back. All right, uh, that jiffy only took about uh, five or six minutes, so in my drawing, I must have gotten confused somehow because I have the bridge middle and neck on the left-hand side when it's oriented this way, which would be, as I'm looking at it now, and the jack coming off of the other side here uh, with a jumper between those two and uh, that's not wired anything like this drawing. This side of the switch has only the, uh, the common over here connected um, which is where the tone is going which is where it should be, um, because it's jumpered to the jack there. But the connections for bridge, middle, and neck are on the opposite side, which could have worked if they were in the right position, but 
bridge, which is here, is wired to this lug at the bottom down at down here in the corner. And down there in that corner, that would be neck. So I'm a little bit confabulated with uh, what I'm seeing. And uh, this is what I found. A couple of uh, things on my part. For some reason, this switch doesn't work like my drawing. It is actually reversed to the drawing that I made. So, I've put the wires for the bridge and neck on this side. And the one for the middle, I put it on this side because it was convenient once I had it over there to begin with. And... Uh, Oh, and the other thing that happened was is that here on the middle pot I forgot to solder this connection and the tone pot which is missing is here and um, I guess it's I don't know what value it is I'll have to measure it but uh, yeah that, that goes from here to the output jack or the common here and I'm going to have to add that to the drawing as well uh, there's no Fralin resistor on this uh, bridge pickup but there is one here on the neck pickup the switch for the neck on all the time whenever you want it on does work properly and I think the volume now works properly for the middle uh, bridge. They can all be done independently. So that's going to have me reinstall, once I reconnect my claw to the ground here, I'm going to reinstall this, and then I'm going to play a little bit with the um, neck, with um, uh, testing some shims. The neck pocket is very clean and very nice on, on the body. Um, it's a very nice uh, wood compared to some of the budget guitars I've received. Um, this is a more dense uh, wood. I remember how hard it was to cut. It cuts like mahogany. I'm wondering if it is mahogany. It's a little bit red like a mahogany. Um, it cut much harder than some of the basswoods that I've been getting which are uh, the lighter version so yes I'm going to put this on and I'm going to play with uh, a few different values of neck shims to try to get it to cant back a little bit see if I can bring these saddles up a tiny little bit go in there I'll have to look at all the things I've been using for shims and uh, I'll let you know if I use one but stand by it'll only be um, half a second for you Okay, so I chose the second thinnest um, one I had, which was uh, 0.20 millimeters. To put in the neck there, and we'll see if if that's going to work out or not. For what I I'm looking for, maybe just a a tiny tiny bit of tilt back. I'll have to do, of course, a full readjustment setup on everything. And I'll have to do that while I'm, uh, I guess, changing out those uh, set screws in the saddle as well. All right. Oh, yeah. This is always the fun part. Of getting this to stay where it should be in the pocket, laying it flat down on its face, and this plate.
Okay, so I'm going to snug the base first. Because that's where the shim is. center. And all the screws. And then I'm just going to snug down the base ones first. And then that'll get it seated in. And then we'll let the, the neck angle back by pulling it in this way. Six or one half a dozen of the other probably would still work, but my, my process is to secure the heel first and then the rest of the neck. Now that shim is so far down into the heel and it only covers about a third of the area. It doesn't show any line here um, that it's, you know, that there's a shim in there. And everything looks okay from that perspective. I'm going to put the Strings back under the string trees. I'm going to flip it around because it's going to make it a little bit easier for me to have it on this side. And I'm going to use this acoustical tuner thing just to play with this over here without having to go to my other bench. Should I put that up a little higher? Yeah, put it up a little higher. I just wanted you to see how I've got this propped up here. And uh, see if I can remember how to turn that on. Do I have to hold it? Yeah, okay. Uh, we'll just clip it there and see how well it picks up. I think I tried this once before. All right, let's see how much buzz I'm going to get. G, D, F sharp, I think I missed it. Yeah, this is not doing such a good job now that there's a bit of a buzz there. Not doing such a good job. Not doing such a good job, so... Hmm. I put shoulder set screws in these saddles. Oh, and uh, hoping they're not too short now. I think I put in sixes. I should have had eights. And uh, I misordered. Uh, I went from tens to sixes, and now I've got an order in for the eights. There's an A, almost.
Still getting buzzing. And at this point, we have to check the truss rod. And uh, I would give the truss rod a little bit of a tidy here. I can get a hold of it and give it a little bit of a tidy. It probably could go a little bit more. Gotta be careful though because it takes a, a minute or two more to get the uh, truss rod to wood to actually go all the way where it's supposed to be. So typically you want to leave a little bit more if you're in a hurry. Make some adjustments, a little bit more of a gap so that when it actually does fully settle with the truss rod pulling it back. It, uh, it hasn't gone too far on you. G in the middle at the crest of the uh, <coughs> radius is uh, usually the one that gives you just that little bit of extra problem. I'll bring it down in pitch, bring it up on the saddle. A, a, a smite, retune, now that I've got extra sets of tuners in stock, uh, another thing I'll put on my maintenance list will be to uh, change out those tuners when, uh, when I take the strings off this thing. Okay, that does it, but what am I sitting at? I'm sitting at three and a half. That's good. Well, I'll take three and a half. That's three and a half. That's three and a half. So three and a half sixty fourths is good. Um, the acoustics on this electric are really good. Um, what was I playing recently? Um, oh, I think it's the Ibanez. The Ibanez has like, doesn't have acoustics like this on it. volumes uh, completely independent. The neck on switch works perfectly and I think the tone's going to work. I just have to go and plug it into the real amp um, because on this little one that the tuk 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 tap test is uh, not uh, that easy to hear it. Stand by I'll let you know. All right let's get her plugged in. Get the, get the amp up. Let's just recheck the tuning over here in this position. It's probably going to be off. It is just a tad. 
Right on. Wasn't too far. Right on. That little acoustic thing is not bad. All right, let's see if it performs as expected. All right, so I'll turn all the, all the volumes down. Tone all the way up. I'm going to put it in the bridge position. All along the switch, nothing. Yay! Okay, up with the... I didn't check the height of the pickups. Oh, they're off. They're off a lot. Well, I'll work, I'll work on that later. Right now it's just for the functionality. Oh, and the tone's working. Yeah. All right, we got it fixed. Middle. Turn that one down. Pickup is powerful on this thing. Uh, oh yeah. There we go. Neck. Whoa! Perfect. Make a good chord. And the tone works in that position. See, the nice thing about having it like this is that in the bridge, you got bridge, and it's got a split coil. Put it in the second position, you can choose as much as you want, and you can blend, you know, these two pickups together, whichever way you like. And then you go middle, but then when you get over here, you can do the same thing with these two. You can blend how much you want, split the coil and blend. Or full humbucker and blend. And if you're down here and you're blending and you want this one on, you can turn that one on and then you can still add this one in. It'll still work to a volume control that one. Put it in the second position. some of that. Oh, take that off. But if I turn this on, now I'm getting this one too. You get a lot of output on this thing. You can have them all three on at full, full capacity at any time you like on this thing. That was the that was the overall intent. It was an afterthought to throw in a tone there because I had a tiny little bit of space. And uh, now I have to actually redraw the schematic and fix it. So now it works like it's supposed to. So that little shim in there worked just perfect. Um, uh, 0.2 millimeter, 0.2. Point two, yeah. and with that adjustment, see, I can still get my very, very, very low, and now my saddles are not going to be all pointing down. They're going to be up a tiny bit more than they were. Not by much. I could have put in a bigger shim, but I didn't want it to camp back that much. I just wanted them up a little bit more. Um, now that I've got the shim in there, the set screws that were there, they're not going to bother the heel of my hand as much as when they were sticking up a lot more. So the first two are actually sunk in. They're six, uh, six millimeter long. These are tens. They come standard with tens. So I left them there. But now I've only got about, say, 
two and a half millimeters sticking out on, on that one, so, and they're smooth on the top. They're not going to uh, scratch my hand at all. Perfect. Oscar, I love you. I love you more when I change out those tuners and there's not that little bit of slop in them. There's something else at some point, but wow. Yeah, for, what did I pay for this thing? 50 bucks for this populated thing. These, these Yibby, uh, which are, what are they called? They're, these Yibbies are copies of, are they Iron Gears? Um, or Invaders. These Yibbies are copies of um, Seymour Duncan Invaders. And uh, yeah, they're pretty good. I still can't get over the acoustics of this guitar. Uh, some of them are like that. They're really good acoustically. And then some of them are dead acoustically. <laughs> anyway, that's it for this time. Thanks for hanging in. Catch you in the next one.